We kick off our top five most haunted graveyards in the UK at number five with St Mary's Church in Whitby. Whitby's parish church, St Mary's, was founded in 1110. Unfortunately, as this is on a cliff top, the salt and wind from the sea has rendered most of the stones in the graveyard illegible. They look like dirty, rotten, snarled teeth sticking up from the grass. Now, this area is probably more well known for the story of Dracula. Bram Stoker's famous novels are set in Whitby. The ship Dracula was on, the Dementor, was headed for London. Unfortunately, it ran aground off Yorkshire. Legend has it that Count Dracula climbed the 199 steps to the graveyard and monastery. He drank the blood of a young girl and then hid in the grave of a suicide victim. The story says that the graves of the girl and the suicide person are still in the churchyard today. They are just simply marked with skulls. However, Bram Stoker did come to Whitby in 1890 in search of a villa. He was inspired by the atmosphere of the clifftop town and it did inspire his story. Bram Stoker created Dracula. But many tourists today forget that he is not real and sometimes you can hear them asking, where is Dracula buried? Now we go on to the hauntings. Uh, Whitby was once teeming with sailors. Unfortunately, sailors died nearby and had to be buried in the ground instead of the traditional seafarer's burial at sea. This caused some of the souls to become restless. In Northern English folklore, the Burgest is a mythical monstrous black dog with large teeth and claws. Locals would often report seeing the bar guest visiting the grave of a sailor on the third night of burial. It is reported that the bar guest would grab the soul of the sailor from its grave and it would then make its way through the graveyard and into the darkness towards the sea. So number four is the magnificent Highgate Cemetery in London. Highgate Cemetery has been known for both flourishing and declining periods in its long history. The cemetery now functions as a popular tourist attraction with most visitors leaving in the evening. However, at night, when all the tourists have gone, the ghosts come out to play. And while you're in there at night, be aware of the Highgate Vampire, which was active in the 1800s and possibly still exists today. According to legend, a man who resided in medieval Romania and practiced dark magic is said to be the vampire of Highgate. After his death, his followers relocated his coffin to England and he was buried in the spot where the cemetery is currently located. He was reportedly woken up by satanic rituals and now haunts the cemetery grounds, mainly preying on foxes. The vampire is tall and shadowy, often making his presence known by a sudden drop in temperature. Electrical devices will stop when he is near and people have been known to run when they detect his presence. The Priory Church of St Mary and the Holy Cross in Binham is classed as the Binham Village Church. But the ruins and the gatehouse around the church gives an ominous feeling, especially at dusk. Places like Binham Priory have inevitably given birth to their own legends and myths in times of ignorance and superstition. Given the ruins and ambience at Binham, it is certainly not a place to be missed and the cherry on the ghostly cake is that there are ghosts and tunnels in this tale. Tunnels that were not frequently used or diverted had to be tested for collapse. There was a violinist, then called the Fiddler, who entered an underground passage accompanied by people who followed the music above ground. They will know if the tunnel has collapsed if the violinist returned the way he came. Fiddlers in those tunnels faced a number of dangers. Sound vibrations in them often caused the tunnels to collapse and the fiddler was to be buried alive and left to die a slow death. 
Years ago, particular areas would be filled with the sounds of a fiddler making his way through the tunnel. Mainly where the tunnels were close to the surface, these places got the nicknames of Fiddler's Hill or Lanes by locals. Now, Binham has his own fiddler story. The fiddler was sent into the tunnels of Binham Priory on his journey to nearby Blakeney. Halfway along the journey, his violin stopped and never started again. This fiddler has took, had took his dog with him. There's two versions of this story. It's said that the dog got out of the tunnel, but the man was never seen again. If you look back through historical records, you can see that a skeleton of a man and the skeleton of a dog had been found in the area where this tunnel was meant to be. So did his dog make it out or were they both buried? Nowadays, in the field above this tunnel, the muffled sound of a violin is said to be heard wafting through the air, but no source has been found. An obituary recorded at the church between 1226 and 1253 mentions an Alexander de Langley, who was once a prior at Wyndham in Norfolk. The folklore states that he studied the scriptures so much it drove him insane. When his outbursts of anger could no longer be detained, he was flogged and held in solitary confinement in Binham until his death. It was said he was buried in chains in the churchyard. Now, another well-known story amongst locals is the ghostly black-robed monk that appeared in the nave of the church. A parishioner reported to the pastor that turning around she saw a dark figure resembling a monk le leaning against a church ledge. The woman looked away and upon glancing back she found that the figure was still there. But when she looked away and glanced back for a third time, the figure was gone. Now, when I was younger, we were always told you should walk in one door round the church and walk out the other. The two should always be used in that order and you should never walk out the inn door or vice versa, as you would be chased by the ghostly monks through the graveyard. The out door is now bricked up, so imagine my conundrum when filming out there one day when I walked round the back of the church to leave the priory the, to find the archway or doorway as it was bricked up. Needless to say, I didn't look behind me as I left. St Nick's Graveyard, Great Yarmouth. Now, this graveyard is supposedly very, very haunted, and we'll start with the story of the mummy of the Egyptian princess. Now, she was given to the school by a teacher in a casket, and this story has been passed down through locals through time. Now the Priory School is right next door to St Nick's and its graveyard. It is reported that the conditions within the school were not ideal to preserve the mummy and it began to decompose. The smell became so horrendous that it was decided to keep the coffin and bury the mummy. And the mummy was buried at night in St Nicholas's churchyard. After this burial, tapping on the vicarage door was heard on several occasions and when the vicar opened the door expecting to find someone who needed his ministrations, he found nobody there. Again, a smell started emanating from the coffin. It was opened once again to find that the mummy's arm had been left behind. The arm was reunited with the buried remains of the mummy and the tapping then ceased. Now, as I said, there are numerous ghost stories told about St Nicholas Churchyard. The most famous one is the one that took place in October 1922, where three ghosts in armour riding on white horses were spotted by many people at once. It is said eight people died in, the How in Howard Street from shock when they saw these ghosts. Thousands of widely excited children and many adults were drawn to the Church Plains and Northgate Street where they peered through the railings for hours in hopes of seeing one of these spirits. However, every now and again someone would shout out that they had seen a ghost flitting among the gravestones and this would cause sheer pandemonium because of all the curiosity it spawned.
And finally, at number one of the most haunted graveyards in the UK, we have Greyfriars Kirkyard in Edinburgh. Now, this graveyard has been considered as being the most haunted in the world. The reason for this is because a man called George Mackenzie. Now, George was a merciless judge who presided over the Presbyterian Covenanters' trials in 1670 and is most associated with these hauntings. Now, let's go back to the 1670s. A petition had been filed by the Covenanters asking for the freedom to practice their religion without interference from the king. Now, Bloody Mackenzie, as he was known as, imprisoned these 1,200 Covenanters near Greyfriars Kirkyard to crush this rebellion against the crown. The prisoners spent over four months waiting for trial in the graveyard. In addition to being without shelter, they were given just four ounces of bread every day. Because of the inhumane conditions at the Covenanters' prison, it is often referred to as the world's first concentration camp. The maltreatment led to the death of hundreds of prisoners and the executions of many others. Now, ironically, George Mackenzie was laid to rest in the Black Museum at Greyfires, adjacent to the Covenanters' prison. This means that the churchyard is at the centre of strange events involving the Mackenzie poltergeists. Visitors are said to leave the cemetery with bruises and scratches, bites and burns. Some have passed out or fell ill. Most of the attacks are said to take place near the Black Mausoleum and the Covenanters prison. An exorcist was called for and failed twice in his attempts at exorcism on Greyfriars. And interestingly, one of the exorcists died of a heart attack a week later. The attacks escalated to the point whereby the city of Edinburgh closed off the Covenanters prison from public and it is still closed today. There's not much to do when all I can is thinking about you, not doing well. Don't know where you are Cause you're not here It's been way too long If I could lay down beside you I would, I would When nothing really matters That's all I wanna do I hope that you are safe And that I will see you soon If I could lay down beside you 